Hey everybody, it's Brock with IA Med, and today's quick hit post is going to be recognizing where the MI is at with just the data presented to us on a 12 lead EKG. Looking over this EKG, even briefly, we are noticing massive problems, right? It looks like we have significant elevation here in V1 through V4, and even a good amount of reciprocal changes and depression in 2, 3, and AVF. Now, if you have a keen eye, you could even say that you might have a little bit of elevation here in AVL and a little bit here in lead 1. For right now, I, I don't think that's too massive of a deal. Our big issues here are the elevation in V1 through V4. Lead 1 and lead AVL are probably just splash damage from the amount of ischemia coming from this region of the heart. What we've done here is we have overlaid the regions of the heart on the 12 lead that we were just looking at. We've already decided that we have elevation here in V1 and V2, meaning that we are having some type of septal involvement with this EKG. And it makes sense, right? It really makes sense because where V1 and V2 sit on either side of the sternum at the fourth intercostal space, it is looking directly at the septum of our heart. And the same is to be said for V3 and V4. Where V3 and V4 sit, it is looking directly at the anterior side of our heart. So what artery is going to be affected by this, right? We have now regionalized it. We know what part of the heart is more than likely to be infarcted by this, right? So which artery is this? In this slide, we are looking at the arteries overlaid for their respective leads. Up here, we have our lateral side, right? Our LCX or left circumflex artery. Down here on our inferior side, we have the right coronary artery. Up here on our septal side, we have the left anterior descending. Now recognize that this also encompasses our anterior side. And how I always like to remember this in this might make zero sense to everybody else, but for some reason it stuck with me, is that this LAD looks like an upside down and mirrored L. Granted, I think that's a heck of a stretch, but for whatever reason, that is how I've always remembered that this is the LAD. Continuing on, this is our lateral side, right? So left circumflex artery yet again. And I have this up here, the LMCA for AVR. AVR is often forgotten about, and I want this video to be short, so I'm not gonna get on my AVR soapbox at this time, but anytime that you see ischemia, so elevation amongst other things in AVR, start thinking, well, this could be something else. Don't entirely forget about AVR as the lead itself. Looking at this mechanically, we see that the LAD sits right about here and it is filled from the left main coronary artery which is one of two arteries that are filled from the aorta the only other one being the right coronary artery now these are filled during diastole in a very low pressure system as this comes down it'll come down through the septum here and on the anterior side you can see how this could be a problem if you were to get a clot right here, right? Because if this right here is our septum, this is our right ventricle, and down here, this is our left ventricle, and we'll just say up here, these are our atrium, that all of this would be ischemic, right? There's a reason this one is called the Widowmaker. Now let's take a look at this EKG, okay? We have elevation in 2, 3, and AVF, right? And we have some reciprocal changes too, right? Maybe a little bit here in lead 1, definitely here in AVL, here in V2, here in V3, and absolutely here in V4, okay? This would be what, right? What side of the heart is this going to be affecting? Which region and which artery? And what are we going to do about it? Is there anything different that we should do? Is there anything that we should expect from 
this type of occlusion. To refresh your memory a little bit from less than probably a minute ago, we are having an inferior MI here, right? 2, 3, and AVF have significant elevation with some reciprocal changes throughout the rest of our 12 lead. With this being an inferior MI, we are looking at a probable RCA occlusion. In about 90% of cases with inferior elevation, it will be an RCA occlusion. That 10%, it could be a left circumflex occlusion. And that is just to confuse you. But just remember that an RCA occlusion is more than likely in 2, 3, and AVF. Looking at this mechanically, our RCA is going to sit just like this, this highlighted vessel right here. Now, like the left main coronary artery, it is filled from the aorta during diastole in a very low pressure passive manner. Thinking about things to consider when we have or are suspicious of an RCA occlusion or we have just inferior side elevation, we want to think about right ventricular involvement. And the reason we want to think about right ventricular involvement is because if we look at this picture, we fill from the aorta and we come down and we branch off. This will perfuse our right ventricle. This will help perfuse our right ventricle. And it goes on this posterior side, also helping perfuse our right ventricle. That's a lot of right ventricular perfusion. And so if we were to cut off, say right here, this is where our clot was. This is gone, this is gone, and our posterior side is starting to become compromised. And with those hearts becoming compromised, they become very preload dependent, meaning we must be very cautious giving nitroglycerin to these right-sided inferior RCA myocardial infarctions. Another thing that we want to be at least cognizant of is another branch in this RCA, way up here, that supplies our SA node. And with the RCA supplying our SA node, we might have a profound bradycardia for those patients that have an SA node that has become ischemic due to a clot or whatever is causing that occlusion. So just a tool for the toolbox when you might have a patient presenting with an inferior MI and a profound bradycardia.